what's up guys? My name is Faison and in this video, I'll be going more into depth on how I built my first place winning gravity vehicle. Before we get into the video, please be sure to leave a like, drop any questions or feedback in the comments below, and subscribe to the channel. I post new videos about science, technology, and engineering every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Also, I want to let you guys know that this video was inspired by a comment from one of my viewers known as Deadly Donut. I'll put his comment on the screen right now. But basically what I'm trying to say is that if you guys have a specific topic or concept you want me to go over or discuss, then please be sure to let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to make a video about it. But with that out of the way, let's get right into the video. So just to demonstrate some of the results you should be able to expect by following the, the methods and other things that I will be discussing in this video, I will be just dropping my card on this ramp here to show you some of the results. Also, I'm not using a loose mechanism and just dropping it because I, will, I want to discuss that loose mechanism in a future video. So if you want to see that, then let me know in the comments below. But right? for now, I'm just going to drop it. Right now, I just set this car to travel roughly 17 meters, so it doesn't hit the back end of this basketball court. But if you, again, if you follow the things I've been in this, excuse me, discuss in this video, then you should be able to achieve far better results if you just want to go the distance. So number one on our list on how you can improve your gravity vehicle, specifically for speed or distance, is of course to put some ball bearings on your axles. Now you'll see right here that I have removed the wheel that was on this axle right here and behind you can see again a bunch of glue because this was a messy job but you also see these, this bearing and if I rotate this wheel this axle rotates pretty well. So this is something you want to do because when you add ball bearings to your device you're in turn reducing the amount of friction that your car has and basically if you reduce the amount of friction your car has then the amount of energy that is lost to heat or that or other forms to friction is reduced and that allows you to put more force onto these wheels to roll and then you should be able to go a lot farther so there are a lot of ways to reduce friction you could use oil you could use graphite powder or other things but the best way by far is to use ball bearings like I have right here. If you want to master the gravity vehicle event, specifically for speed or distance, then you have to do the following. You have to focus on the weight placement of your gravity vehicle. And this is because a gravity vehicle is all about gravitational potential energy and how you can maximize its usage and use it efficiently. So if you want to maximize the amount of gravitational potential energy your car has to begin with, then you have to change where the center of mass of your car is. So if my center of mass of my car was here and we compared that car to a center of mass that was farther to the back, the car with the center of the mass farther to the back is going to have more gravitational potential energy. And this is because when that car is stood up onto the ramp, then the car with the uh, center of gravity farther to the back will have its mass higher up on the ramp. And that will allow the car to have more gravity to potential energy going down the ramp and going down the track. So in short, you want to have your center of gravity be as far back as possible. Now, if you look at the car I have right here, you'll see this blue little enclosure right here. And inside this enclosure, there is a one kilogram block. Now what this does is it turns the center of gravity where it would usually be, it's like right here, farther back. And I believe it's roughly around here. So again, this is not the ideal way you are, the ideal placement of your center of gravity. Ideally, you want the center of gravity to be as close to the back wheels as possible without going beyond the axle, otherwise it will just fish tail. But 
putting a, a big chunk of weight right here, say one kilogram or a little bit more, is by far the best way to manage the weight of your car and improve the distance and speed. Now, the last thing that you need to consider when trying to maximize your gravity vehicle for speed or distance has to do with the ramp itself. So if we look at the, at the ramp I have and we look at how I want my gravity vehicle to set, then we want to put this car on this ramp in a way where the gra gravitational potential energy of this car is maximized. Now, as we discussed in the part prior to this, we know that we want the weight to be as far to the back as possible because that's going to shift the center of mass of the car from somewhere in the middle to closer in the back. And doing so is going to increase gravitational potential energy. Now this same concept applies to placing your car onto the ramp. The higher up the car is on the ramp, the farther, or excuse me, the more gravitational potential energy your car has to utilize to go down the ramp and down the track. So in order to do this, you want to do two different things. You want to maximize the height of your ramp and you want to maximize the placement of your car on the ramp. Now these are two different things. The height of the ramp is just the build height of your ramp. Now the placement of the car on the ramp is a little bit different. So let's say for example, I have a hook sticking out here that attaches to this car. I don't want the hook to be down here because then I'm just losing this much potential energy. Instead, you might want the hook to be right at the very top. So when this car sits on top of this, it is, this is car is at the highest possible point. And that's going to allow your car to utilize the most amount of gravitational potential energy. Now there's one caveat to this rule of improving your, uh, your gravitational potential energy with your ramp. And that is that the shape of your ramp does not matter whatsoever in changing the gravitational potential energy. Instead, it only shifts the, um, the ability of your car to roll down smoothly. So what I mean is that there are a lot of people thinking that a brachycychrome curve which is, which is defined as the shortest possible curve or route for a ball to take from the top to the bottom of a ramp. And while yes, it has the shortest possible time, it does not provide the fastest possible velocity. And velocity is what we are after. So if you want to improve or increase the velocity and in turn the distance your car travels, you want to focus on the ramp height and the car's placement on the ramp. The other factors of the ramp are not that important in determining the distance and the speed. The only thing you want to consider though is you want a smooth transition from the top to the bottom because that is going to allow you to have a smooth transition and you're not going to lose any energy to to the car jumbling around on the ramp. If you want to learn more about the topic we just discussed, I'll leave a link in the description below that will take you to my website where I created a post about this exact topic. But if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like, drop any questions or feedback or other ideas you have in the comments below. Follow me on social media. My page for Instagram will be on the screen right now, or you can find my links in the description below. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel because I post new videos about science, technology, or engineering every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And with that said, I'll catch you guys next time. Stay unfazed.